Whew, it's cold. Okay, um, this is a, few, a couple of tacks. And I'm gonna try to do this by uh, with one hand while I'm holding my camera phone in my other hand. And what we have here is um, some six millimeter mesh or quarter inch mesh. And hold on a second, this is hard to do. I'm gonna go wide. There we go. I'm just gonna shove that into over the bottom entrance of this hive. And it's, uh, and then I take my little tacks and I just push them in. Hopefully I can do this. This is hard to do with one hand and the camera. Yeah, it's not as good. Hold on. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I might redo this later, but for demonstration purposes, let's just say this is working. Um, but why it's not working is this mesh needs to go right flush down to the bottom. It's better if it goes right down to the bottom, but anyway, but let's pretend it is. Okay, and then we take a, the, the tack and we tack it in, and there we go. We got yourself a quarter inch mesh or a six millimeter mesh covering the bottom entrance. And that will prevent shrews from getting into the hive in the winter. And shrews, when they get into the hive, they, um, they will eat the bees. They, they will pluck one bee at a time from the cluster and eat as much as 125% of their body weight every day, which is, I did the math once, maybe I'll just pop it up on the screen right now, boop. And so it's a lot of bees and it stresses the bees and it eventually kills the bees. And uh, I lost most of my bees. I had eight hives, it was about five or six years ago. And I lost uh, all of them except for maybe two, I think. Uh, to, to shrew predation because I didn't have quarter inch mesh. I had half inch mesh over my hives and half inch mesh will do the job. It'll keep mice out, but it won't keep shrews out. And, um, but if you don't have shrews, then go ahead and use the uh, half inch. I, I did it for five years and there was no problem. And then I went to a place where there were shrews and then it was like devastation. So anyhow, this is all I do. Um, I just put the quarter inch mesh over the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the bottom, uh, entrance and I can put it up on the other entrances like that's an entrance and that's an entrance um, it depends on you know I think how high the snow is and stuff like that because if the, if the snow is high and the shrews can go do 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 boop and jump in the hole then yeah maybe put the put the mesh on there too but uh, right now I'm just putting it on the bottom and I should have done this on a warmer day when the bees were actually flying and I would have had more protection and stuff um, because right now, because it's freezing cold, it's like, I think it's zero degrees today, um, mice are already looking for warm places to hang out, and it's possible there, there's one inside this hive, and I've just trapped it inside this hive, and that's bad news, right? The mice will make a nest, and they'll eat comb and all that stuff. They won't eat the bees, but it'll stress the hell out of them, and then they'll, the bees will die. And, but uh, uh, shrews are even worse, so that's why I've got this quarter inch on there. And so it's possible I've, I've locked a predator or, you know, a little rodent inside. Which isn't good, but I'll check on it later on just to make sure that this is actually the case, uh, that there, there's, no, there's nothing in there. But it's better to do this on a warm day when the bees are flying and you know, because when they're flying and they're not clustered, they can, they can chase the mice out of the hive and they can chase shrews out of the hive. So there's more, less likely that there's anything in the hive on a warm day. And that's the time to do this. But anyway, I'm doing it today because uh, I'm running out of warm days. There's just not many warm days. So that's it. This is my big uh, thing that I'm doing today. I'm going around to all of my hives. That one's already got it done. And the rest of them are going to get it done. And uh, the other thing I do is I don't have a good example right now. But I don't always keep the bottom entrance wide open like this. Some people use an entrance reducer and the quarter inch mesh. And I kind of do that too. I, um, I often will take a st stick like this. Actually, that might work perfectly. And that, so it keeps the entrance, an entrance right there on the side there and one there on the side. So the bees can still come and go through the side, but it um, reduces the cold blast of winter air that can sometimes... Uh, you know, freeze the bees, especially if they're clustering down below. And I did this last year and it worked out really well because I, th I found that without that big blast of cold air, um, they were clustering, they're more likely to cluster down down below and then slowly work their way up. Instead, with that big blast of cold air, they, they, they'll just sort of, yeah, they'll, sometimes they'll even leave honey behind in the frames down below because it's so cold. So as long as there's some ventilation is my guess on the sides, that will give them the ventilation they need and they can still come and go 
And in the winter time, if there's dead bees clogging up, I just go do do do, just pull it off, go like this, <clears throat> right? Pull it off, and you take your hive tool if you got one. I should don't have one on me right now. But I got this. I can just use this this, and you go and you go in here and go scoop doop, and you just scrape out any dead bees, and then you put the the mesh back on. And if you want to, you can put your your engines reduce it back on or at least well by you I mean me that's what I do so anyhow that's uh, today's beekeeping winter tip from the uh, cool island in Newfoundland here you go later <laughs>